follow Audio microphone. Oh, you just 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 told your name, Jin. Ah. No. Eh? This name is how? This name is. Yeah, I'm not sure. This name needs to change. Live stream 要改一下名字，等一下。你要改成什么？我现在可以改。你微信发给我吧。你这些 online gallery。online gallery online。Presentation 还是 Introduction？ 把那名字写上去。他丢到的名字，不要丢。哈哈哈哈哈！大家。
个。因为我们还有 category， 就是，而且这个之前是去年的九月十四号，然后所以说十一点半。不用理他，他那个时间。赶不过来呀、啊，因为他直接 go live 就到这儿 ，very nice。那从开始吗？你们直接开始就好了，不理他。Oh, you wanna do it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you wanna? No, I don't wanna. For someone. <laughs> someone. Oh, because so, um, I'm thinking we can talk about um, the gallery from Metaphor. Oh yeah. So we can talk about uh, Peking and Lucian and Jeff. Okay. Yeah. Can I get like a minute or two so I can go to the bathroom and then come back? Oh yeah. Sure. <laughs> I'll be right back. Yeah. Just give me a moment. I also need to take a photograph.就操作的话，就用这，你用键盘吗？用键盘。那所以我要换的时候就直接换，是吗？你要换，对，你就直接在那个这个这个浏览器里面换就，就 link 啊什么。那我刚刚的 link 呢？是。这这个 link 是你一个 link， 然后有还有两个 link， 
就是在我的 WeChat 里面你发给我的。哦。对。或者你自己输上去也可以。如果你记得的话。还是你要不要直接帮我把那两个打开？一共是三个。对，那个这中那个这三个。好，这个也是零钱。我怎么听到我自己的声音了？有啊，有声音啊。他他那个 YouTube 有延迟。我怎么知道我讲的是大声还是小声？你用 YouTube 听啊。稍微比，比你刚才跟我说话大声一点，就是。因为他的麦就在这儿。有听到吗？这个。什么？吵架的声音。这没办法，这这是有是一定。OK。Hello， 哎，是这样。如果不是在这个麦指向性的外面。说话，他那个声音是会非常小的。哦、oh.。所以就。哇，你讲的都比较大声。没事，有麦说。OK。耶、yeah, ，Go！ Do you think it's a little too hot in here? It is very hot in here. Yeah. Because it's um. Light. Is yeah. is it a light or? The, the heat? Yeah, it's. I'm sweating right now. Oh my god. Little Mongol. Oh. Oh. Oh, very nice. How can I look at it? Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Jade. <laughs> Welcome to the You Know Arts. So today we're gonna show you. Um, Maybe um, turn that on. Yeah, because I I, I want to like buzz into my voice, so <laughs> that's why I'm turning it on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So we have the current exhibition. It will be open. Oh, it's from Pei Pei. It's the shape shifting exhibition and will be open until the following Monday, which is January um, 30, 31st. So if you have time, please stop by. Uh, we are at 4211 number three road, Richmond, BC. Okay, so let's take a tour. Okay. Uh, So as you can see, we have um, Pepe's work right here. And oh, when you um, find the link, you can also um, like browsing the website by yourself. 
and you can click the docs right here it will give you a little bit introduction about the work and the size and you can also like scroll down and then you can click the link to our main website and this is um, the particular one I really like uh, which is about the postman <laughs> yeah because um, I really like um, how the color and how uh, people use um, like um, he kind of like um, distort the forms and then adding a little bit like abstract elements to the painting right here and I don't know if you can tell like right here is um, the postman's messenger bag is right here <laughs> and you can also see the wells so like the postman is like running around the city and also to like to the countryside And then oh, let me share it to the chat. Oh. Before handle. <laughs> Hopefully someone joins you too. Let's see. Right. Oh, and when you use um this website, um the good thing about it is you can like zoom in. Like really close, so you can see all the details um, of artist techniques, and then you can also like zoom out, so you can have a far away um, perspective to view the painting. So also you can click the link right here, so you can see all the details. And when you click the link right here, it will pop up a new window and take you to our main website. So you can like choose the artwork you like and then take a bit. Okay, and then let's go back and just walk around. There's another two paintings. It's called Deep Blue. And then Temptation in Blue. And then for previous exhibition, we do have more work to show. So you can like walk back to the end of the space. And here's um, the Spinners series, and this is about Spinners 2. And then we also have another series. Sure. Oh no, not another series. It's the same, um, it comes from the Spinner series. And when Pepe um, is playing around um, his series of work, uh, it's about, um, I think it's the peak year of the Chinese New Year. And so that's why he made this painting with the little two piggies right here. And you can see the Chinese letter right here. There's another one. And the high time. And the low tie. Okay, so that's pretty much 
about the whole exhibition. If you do want to um, come visit us on the weekend, uh, please give us a call so we can book you in for an appointment to visit the gallery. So that's it about um, the shape-shifting exhibition. And then, this is another one we had last year. Okay. It's a super filler by Jeff Wilson. Mm -hmm. And this is the amazing installation made uh, by our curator, Maria. Let's see the basket. I think we spent like two days to paint the basket into white, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> then. Okay, so So the way we are doing um, this kind of like online virtual gallery. Um, so for those of you who haven't um, like visit our gallery and like um, don't have time to come to our exhibition, this is a really good way to like um, revisit our gallery, and you can like spend the t all the time you want on the link. This is the Hicker Sticks. And this is um, the really popular, the White Rabbit Cafe. And this is the also the popular paintings when we have our opening last year and also this is the Jeff Wells's uh, uh, his favorite painting for this exhibition then got the Kenji Nido soup it's right here you can relax um, yeah <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm really nervous and it, yeah, because it's, 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 it's really hot I'm like sweating all the time <laughs> I know oh my goodness I remember when I did it I felt like I could spit it onto my face yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I was trying to articulate my words well personally I like this one the lucky candy oh, yeah. yeah it's because um the red color mm -hmm. and also like the golden like the have shiny. You, have you tried? Yes. Do you like it? I like it because it's like a strawberry flavor candy. A strawberry. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. Is it sweet or more of like um, a? Um, uh, for me, it's not too sweet. Not too sweet. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I I got some at the front door. If you want, you can grab some. Oh, 
Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That would be great. <laughs> Um, we attempted to get this for the exhibition, uh -huh. but because it was a new year, we couldn't find it anywhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, it took me to a couple of places to mm -hmm. look for this item, but no one... It was I think um, when you go to the grocery store or like the market, they mm -hmm. only have those Prada when it comes to the Chinese New Year. Chinese New Year. Yeah, so oh. that's why we can't not find it. So does the packaging change every year to reflect the current... Um, no, but no. they do have like different packaging for different brands. Oh, I see. Yeah, because I believe this is from, um, what is it called? Uh, Garden League? Um, sorry, I don't remember the brand name. No, no worries. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. So between Lucky Candy and White Rabbit, mm -hmm. which one do you say you prefer? <laughs> oh, that's... That's a tough call. <laughs> <laughs> I like both, mm -hmm. but um, for Lucky Candy, I probably just have them during the Chinese New Year. Oh, okay. Yeah, but the rabbit, um, the white rabbit candy, I can have it like all the time. All the time. <laughs> yes. Do you have any fun childhood memories from well, trying white rabbit? Um, Do you have like, any like fun time? Oh, okay. um, Barbara says that you can take off your mask. Oh, I because it's true, it's blending in with the oh, yeah. background. But I do like it. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara would like to see your pretty face. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> I'm not wearing like... Um, I only wear a little bit of makeup, so. Oh, mm. I see. I'm a little shy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, we can get closer to. No. The Cool Range. Oh, yeah. You yeah. tried it. You didn't I really like it. it, right? Mm, Can yeah. you explain the flavor? What? I, I don't know how to explain the flavor. For <laughs> me, it's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting flavor. Yeah, because uh, like from my understanding, probably um, I like cheese with uh, barbecue flavor uh. or only like with salt or vinegar. Mm -hmm. So for this one, it's not really like barbecue-y and not mm -hmm. really salty. It's a little sweet. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say like um, more like a seaweed flavor, but it doesn't taste like seaweed as well, so mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I think we have someone who's new. Mm. But have you tried the Cool Range? I haven't. Oh, you Even haven't? Like oh, so that's why you cannot describe the flavor. <laughs> yeah, I can't describe the flavor. Have you tried hickory sticks? Oh, I like it because it's like really barbecue yeah, flavor. Yeah, it's so very salty. It. Yeah, it's really salty, so you have to drink something <laughs> when you have the hickory sticks. So someone named Jarvis is saying, I grew up eating those white rabbits. Really? Mm. Oh, any good memory with it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, like a couple weeks ago, I bought another product. It's the white rabbit. Ice bar? Ice bar? Yeah. It tastes like the candy and it's really good. Oh. I like it. But the price is a little pricey. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. I have to confess. I never try cheesy. Oh, <laughs> no. Because I like Cheetos. So. Oh, you like Cheetos? Yeah, okay. I like Cheetos. So cheesy <laughs> tends to have more of a firm texture. Okay. And I find that texture very satisfying to chew on. Is it really hard to chew? Because no, it's no, really no. firm. It's, it's firm, but like it's satisfying too. So it's oh. like easy to bite into. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Something that we didn't get was the Macintosh candy. Oh yeah, this one's really hard to find. Apparently you can get, I saw it at London Drugs. Really? Yeah. Is it the same package? Yeah, the same package and everything. Oh. It's actually candy. Yeah. Uh, did you see it over there? It's candy. Yeah. In my mind, I thought it was some type That's of right. chip. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was candy, actually. I know this is like a soft one. Because the original one is a really like the hard candy. So you have to like break it so you won't break your teeth. <laughs> okay. So that's it for J. Felton's exhibition from last year. See, we have a Christmas tree right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, back when we did yeah. the Christmas tree. So right now it went back to two. Mm -hmm. So I think that's our people. I can't see who is watching us. Can I see that? Probably just me. <laughs> okay. Um, and someone in the side. But, the, but that is, that's, um, feel somewhat reassuring <laughs> with just the few of us. Yeah. Okay. So we do have, um, B. Shan's exhibition from last year. So, for B. Shan's artwork, it's more about reflecting um, his approach to um, the nature and the stones. And his work, most of his work is in a uh, large size. So you can see from here. Okay, I don't know. That's centimeter. I don't know how, what's the size for the inch? <laughs> okay, it's that, that big. <laughs> yeah, it's really big, so <laughs> you can tell from the wall. Okay. And we do have a small one right here. Well, most of the work is um, untitled. So if you do want to have a look, closer look, you can zoom in or go to our website. So when you go to our website, you can see all the um, his works right here. And you can click view more. So there's more coming up. And then you can also use our app. It's right here. Okay. So by the way, so Lesions artwork are presented by um, the True Color Art Gallery um, in North Vancouver. So it's our like first collaboration with them. too fast. For his exhibition, um, I know probably it's a bit hard to see all the details because of reflection. So you should buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. 
Yeah, you 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 can you can buy it right away, <laughs> or just go to our main website. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> For me, this painting is trying to um, differentiate itself from the other work because you can see there's a large, um, the artist use um, black ink all over the painting. Not many colors are in, um, like um, shown in this painting. And you can see the signature from the artist right here. So we will have all the links um, available in the description so you can take a look for yourself after the live streaming. <laughs> Even all those in ink, <laughs> <laughs> so busy. Oh my god, busy girl. Okay, I think that's what we have so far, right? For the online virtual gallery, we only have three. I yes, um, there will be a new one for long next weekend. Yes, uh, maybe next, next week. Yeah, oh, and we do have um, the new exhibition coming next week yes yes the opening reception is if you're living in vancouver canada the opening reception that starts at 2 p.m and goes until 5 p.m mm -hmm. saturday very fifth so you're very welcome to come and join us yeah join us we'll have complimentary drinks and the chips from the <laughs> popular exhibition <laughs> So if you never been to our main website, you can basically type um, www.yklan.ca will direct you to our main website. So this is our home page. Okay. It will give you a quick overview for all the options we have. 
So this is like um, the current one. For KP. Oh, and this is another one we have right now, but the exhibition is um, at Art Tour Gallery, which is in White Rock. So for this, we have um, three um, amazing artists right here for this. Is it me making that noise? Mm. So it's I'm a front computer. Must be right now. I'm just basically updating everyone with the um, opening information. Oh. How come I feel this voice it comes from the TV? Is it? No? Could be. Hmm. I'm fairly sure. Oh, I but think it, it, it is, it's from a computer. From that computer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, okay. So that's why. Is it nice? Uh, no, you? it's from Berwyn. Uh, very well, are you busy? <laughs> <laughs> busy co worker. <laughs> okay. This is all the options we have, and it's all available for you to purchase. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it? This ice lemon tea is the best thing that has ever happened to my life. Where did you get it? Aberdeen. Oh, where? Uh, the um. Is it uh the bubble waffle? Not the bubble waffle. This one is the curry, not curry, <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> Sushi at the Aberdeen Court. I keep forgetting their name, but oh, um, if you're in the area, check them out. Make they make good stuff. I'll see that oh, show. does it show? Yeah. Oh, this is the ice tea we're talking about. Um, oh, it's not show. It's not show. Uh, it's transparent. It's no, delicious. No, no. Oh. <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> <laughs> it's not show. It's so funny. Yeah. Enjoy, um, enjoy the food at Aberdeen and drive by at the gallery. Yes. <laughs> I recommend the uh, ice lemon tea. Almost every single s store at the oh, Aberdeen yeah. has it in mm -hmm. the court. The ice lemon tea? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this like a Hong Kong? Uh, yeah, drink? I think it's like a Hong Kong based mm -hmm, drink. <laughs> it's, re it's really good for the summertime. Yeah, yeah it's really I good. I like it. In the summertime, I like the passion fruit from the oh. cocoa. Oh, from cocoa? Yeah, the, uh, oh. their tea is delicious. I thought you were getting one from Starbucks. <laughs> uh, I like from Starbucks. I like I, the I don't remember they do have... fruit oh. tea. Mm. I like that one. One time I asked them for, I can't remember what it was, but um, I think, what was it? Is it? Hold on. I think it was a combination of passion fruit and strawberry, mm -hmm. and uh, and then the barista literally had no idea what I was talking about, so oh. she gave me something I have never tried before, and mm -hmm. that was till this day the best drink, really? summer drink I ever had at Starbucks. Oh. And then I asked the, and I try asking again for the same drink, mm -hmm. and every time I order it, it's always different. <laughs> I think that because they have like a special menu, so when you ask it, they thought, oh, maybe uh, you're asking a special menu, so they kind of You know, like they can customize your drink. Yeah. So, which is why I think I it's never been the same. <laughs> <laughs> Let me share this, I'll have you back. Yeah. Right, every barista might customize your drinks. <laughs> I 
so we can relax. Yeah. Is it half hour? <laughs> a few more minutes and it'll be a half hour. I'm trying to make a half hour for today. Yeah. <laughs> what else can we talk about? Oh, we do have um, like um, our own virtual gallery coming up for all the exhibition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we like um, customize each space for the artist. Mm -hmm. It's been live for forty six minutes. Oh, uh, would you like to? Would you like to go till five so that we make it at like a? Or should we make it until a whole hour? Do you think you can hold on to for a whole hour? No, I think I uh, for the first fifteen minutes, it's just like setting up everything. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, never mind then. So. Yeah, let's <laughs> maintain the recording going. <laughs> so I can talk a little bit about the left side in there. Yeah, that side. Mm -hmm. So, as a the curation process, I thought it would be a good idea. Do you want to switch? <laughs> <laughs> Let's switch. <them. laughs> oh. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, this is always so nerve wracking. <laughs> oh I think it's easier for you um, to capture your voice. Oh, all right. Because um, the microphone is on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Last time we were experiencing issues with the static. Mm -hmm. Do you think having it like this removes um, that noise? I'm not sure. I have to. <laughs> I'm getting myself ready. Bring my hair forward. Hello, everyone. My name is Maria. I am an art advisor at Le Pont Gallery and Juno Arts. I curated this show by Jeff Wilson. So during my thought process, <laughs> sorry, I'm just kind of like a little bit distracted by the sorry, current playback. Oh, okay. Yeah. So during the thought process, I thought I would make the exhibition look like a bit of a supermarket. And as you go through, as you walk through the supermarket, let me see if I can get you that angle. I was thinking of separating the artworks as if they were the items inside an aisle. So, which is why on this white wall over here, you mostly see Asian products to indicate they're from the Asian aisle. <laughs> so this is like a North American thing I personally come from a country that they don't have this concept. Everything, we don't have like an international aisle because it's not like a melt, what they call here a melting pot mm -hmm. of different cultures. So everything that you want is categorized pretty standard like meats, dairy. Mm -hmm. But in here we have, um, due to the demographics, we do have an Asian aisle. We also have an international one. Yeah, we do. Yeah, as well. Mm -hmm. And then um, I, you know, these two artworks <laughs> over here. The reason why I thought it would be interesting to place them together is to get like a cheap brand. So this one that's Dutch, it's something that started off as a Canadian brand and then got bought by an American brand now. So <laughs> like most Canadian brands, they start off Canadian and then they become American at one point in their life. So what I was trying to get at with this artworks is that uh, people tend to gravitate towards um, brands and as a way to justify their I guess you could say their social status. So I was talking about this illusionary realisms that 
we perpetuate within a capitalist culture, and that's one of the ways that you I, kind of participate in that in in that particular in in the current system. It's by validating these companies by purchasing branded items instead of having the no name, even though the quality could be just as delicious. And I'm sure many people do prefer this particular chip over the salt and vinegar, but I just find that, so yeah, there's a bit of an echo that you're right. Not, from here I can hear the echo, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so with the um, no name, I, I was just talking, it, t it tends to be a little bit cheaper versus the Dutch one that tends to be just a few, ten, like 10 to 20 cents more expensive. Mm -hmm. So it also gives you a bit of a history, right? You, Im you imagine something that's crafted, but this is kind of, it's all fried, they're chips, right? So that's the aspect that Jeff discusses within his work uh, when he calls this his artwork junk food <laughs> is simply because a great deal of it are these fried items and then we're trying to add a hierarchy to how fry you can fry things and then based on that um, the freshest one tends to be the most expensive one so you participate in the illusion you authenticate that's the word i was looking for you authenticate the illusionary realism so society so is i can pronounce this word right now <laughs> so it's out of status simply by purchasing the branded name so i love this wall of just having these chips these two over here for this one i think that um i was going more for a visual aspect that i like the idea of having the stripes. Something that Jeff brings a lot in his work is the visual similarities and how we, it has become a bit of a system for chips companies to follow. So what I like so much is this jarring um, <laughs> font, but I also like the stripes. You get this very linear approach to this particular piece and how it breaks down into this more organic shapes over here within the actual product. So you can visually see the product. And then versus the Macintosh one over here. So once again, very linear, again, in its execution, and you can see even how it gets interrupted by a bit of an organic line over here, the way you do with cheeses. Same thing with Macintosh. But instead of actually showing you the product within the packaging, it gives you a bit of an illustration that's meant to give you the idea of what you're buying. And I wanted to contrast this. It's basically almost the same idea, but executed differently. And from a visual standpoint, I thought this would be very interesting. Um, also, you know, orange and red kind of look really good. So I just uh, have this too. <laughs> I'm kidding. So I like, I like them visually for that reason as well. Um, let's see. So as you exit the supermarket, usually you find uh, this type of bars towards your checkout area, which is why I have them, <laughs> you know, towards the end. The reason why is because, quote unquote, our checkout area is right over here. This is the reception, and this is where we do finish the transactions, whether people are buying artworks within the gallery space. And. Um, Anyone love a really good crunchy? I'm actually a big fan of the Henry over here. Um, that brings very much middle school. So I didn't get to try any of these brands until I came to Canada. And i um, big fan of the Henry O, actually. So let me take you back to the very beginning of the exhibition. So when we were thinking about super filler. I was discussing with Jeff how I wanted to turn this into a conversation between how galleries and supermarkets and these, these systems, how they are very similar in ex execution. So we went to, we mimicked that by um, making basically the title look like a superstore, a Costco imitation. Mm -hmm. So we thought that this, you know, I took this to this, just a little bit of a background story. I took this to the designer 
uh, his name is Leo. Hi, Leo, if you're watching, hello. So I showed, it, I showed Leo what I wanted to achieve, and then he's like, oh, you wanna do that? that that looks so ugly, right? <laughs> so Leo was trying to make something that it's once again very, it's interesting that he would say it like that because these fonts are meant to be very accessible and readable to the majority of people. But from a design standpoint, they tend to look a little bit chunky, a little bit lacking in, in aesthetics and um, you know, I was asking Leo to actually italicize these fonts so it would reflect more of this movement that they try to capture within the logos. And Leo was, it told me a hard no. He's <laughs> like, let's make this, I think you get your point across like this. Let's not make it too ugly <laughs> because we're still a gallery and we do want to present things in a matter that doesn't look too tacky. <laughs> And uh, talking about tackiness, let me sh see if I can show you. So let me zoom in into this. Uh, let me, yeah, look at that label. So these labels are meant to be an imitation of what the Costco labels are, but they're a little more exaggerated. I remember I walked into the Costco and they were selling the latest phone and the label was so huge. It literally had a giant font for the numbers like, over a thousand dollars. So that's the aspect that I wanted to parallel with and contrast with the gallery. So galleries tend to give place all the sizes in the same hierarchy, basically. So everything gets the same amount of um, same amount of space in a way that in a supermarket we always prioritize the price as the biggest. Um, as the biggest thing for a viewer to see. And um, I wanted to re recreate this experience in a gallery setting because even though we are presenting cultural interest for the viewer and we do want to have um, gallery visitors question many of the systems they partake in, it's also very important to realize that we are a commercial gallery at the end of the day and we are looking to sell these artworks. So something that I always find that the art, world, the art world is not very transparent on is pricing. Sometimes they don't even show you the price because depending on who you are, they get, oh, this is an actual practice in New York that they are trying to change, you know, very unregulated market over there. It's, it's the wild west over there. Um, so over there, um, from what I heard <laughs> is that depending on how much money you have, they will change the price of the artwork. So if you have a lot of money, um, they will probably jack up the price for you. So it's not very transparent. And in that, uh, in that, um, in that, um, in that, in that, um, how do I say it? So in that light, I wanted to be very transparent with our pricing instead of sort of, I find that it's a little bit intimidating to go up when we say when we have things like if you want the price please go ask the uh, reception like the gallery assistant I, I mean interesting that I use the word receptionist because I see cashiers and gallery assistants as having a very similar role within the supermarket and the gallery system and then I um, I think I lost my train of thought <laughs> I was going so it's a little bit intimidated uh, intimidating asking for prices because you're wondering, are they gonna deny me the access of wanting to see the price for these bees? Are they gonna try to, I, you know, it's pretty interesting. I should try this for one of, there are sometimes galleries here in Vancouver do this where they don't give you the price outright. And I wonder, they could be, it could be for a couple of reasons. They might be holding off the artwork for uh, an institution, that is to say somewhere like the Vancouver Art Gallery, you know, bigger institutions that get to have really large collections. And, or maybe they might want to give it to a collector who has a well-known, like a very extensive collection. And they might, that, that might be one of the reasons why you might not find these prices readily available here in Vancouver, where they also might want to hold off a piece from the general public. So having this transparency does make things very accessible. And uh, we, as you can see, 
these this, this labels are very tacky. And I got questioned. Artists came in and asked me, um, do you actually label your artworks like this? I just thought that for this exhibition in particular, it does make sense to have this type of garish labeling. I just thought that it, it, all, went, it all went as a whole. And that was very important for myself and the artists. Artist was uh, Jeff Wilson. It's the artist, and he is very wonderful to work with. Very wonderful artist. Uh, good work as well. He has some very incredible um, neon sign paintings that I wish I could show you. Can I bring out the Waikiki link over here, or would I? Let me get that for you. Would it be intimidating <laughs> if I bring out Google search? No. It's uh, so you are very welcome to look at our virtual rooms via YK link. Mm -hmm. Jay will very kindly give you the link for that. Let me see. So we have this one over here. And I forgot my train of thought as well <laughs> while I was going for, oh yeah, I wanna introduce you to the, oh, I'm a sparkly, look at me, I'm so cute. Wait, hold on, my name, Steamer dog. I'm a steamer dog. Interesting. I'm a Hello Kitty. How about that one? Is that cute? Yeah, that is cute. Yeah, Sparkling cute. <laughs> Alrighty. So this is our virtual virtual room. Oh, it's quite. Oh, sorry, I forget that I have to use different keys to actually introduce this room over here. Oh. So you can see some of the installation that we did that happened. So you can no longer see this exhibition in person, but you can admire these artworks in our visual, um, virtual, sorry, virtual exhibition. So these are the neon lines I wanted to talk about. Let me go through them. So Vancouver has a very rich history of having at one point in time, they were considered like the brightest city in North America because we had an incredible amount of uh, signage, neon signage to be specifically. And um, unfortunately, it's no longer that case. I believe that there have been uh, city bylaws that no longer allow for this amount of neon signs. I think the concern back then was that this was ruining the uh, the West Coast uh, environment because a really big aspect of Vancouver is in these wonderful mountains. You get to see the uh, Rockies. It's, mm -hmm. it's a very beautiful green site. And there were a uh, public concern that these neon suns were taken away from the natural beauty of the city. And I believe at one point there was a bit of a, a bit of a controversy back then that these neo signs were using a very uh, toxic gas. So there was a bit of misinformation, I believe, with that in the aspect that there was a bit of quote unquote fake news that these gases were, were killing us or something. But um, you know, they're contained. Um, and currently, many of these signs have gone to historical, they're, they're being preserved, I believe, by the Museum of Vancouver and other non, non-profits, I believe, other museums, other museums. Um, because they're a big part of uh, the identity of the 1960s, 70s, I would even say 1950s landscape of Vancouver. So if you have a chance, you can come look at our exhibition over here is uh, most another beautiful artwork. So what I like about selecting this particular um, painting for this virtual exhibition is that they match, uh, do I have someone there? Who is it? Little Helper, oh, so cute, thank you so much. You look adorable there. So what I like about the virtual exhibitions is that they allow artists to have to promote their works in a very professional manner that they can showcase their new work. Ding dong, ding dong. I think Yvonne will get that. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Oh, this artwork is not Jeff's. 
It's okay, ignore that sign. <laughs> so, oh, look at that beautiful painting. Love that painting. So wonderful. So, I, uh, something that I didn't mention is that that's where uh, there was a big concentration of uh, the Chinese demographic, and they had a lot of uh, Chinese business businesses that are currently being uh, gentrified, 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 what are we saying, gentrified? With, through gentrification, there you go. Usually the word gentrification means that when a um, uh, low income neighborhood is being sacked, let's use the word, they're being sacked by the upper class so that they can actually, so that real estate companies can build new buildings there for like the middle income upper class. Uh, investor type of audience, um, but I, you know, the word gentrification to you for, yeah, I guess we could use it, but um, I prefer if we have thought of something different. Anyways, it's just my little critique on that particular word when we use. Oh yeah, cafe. So many of these signs have um, b like businesses that are restaurants mostly and there was a lot of art, art artistry that went behind it and many of these um, it, it's a bit of a shame that many of these are, oh hello little helper <laughs> Jay thank you so much no 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 it's okay so you can see over here there was so much signage back then and there was there was something so beautiful there was an artistry behind these artworks and now that they are no longer available sometimes um, some of these signs have gone completely out of existence and some of them are being preserved so that the public can actually be aware that we have this history in Vancouver. Kind of interesting to see that we had like the brightest city in North America overtaken by cities like Las Vegas and Tokyo, I believe. They're a very bright cities, 100%. Yeah, at one point, I mean, back in the oh. 50s, yeah, a long time ago, decades ago, <laughs> Vancouver no longer has this type of title. But um, if I were to create a curation, curate these artworks, let's say in an exhibition, then I would mention sites that are no longer available and mention the current gentrification that's happening within this area. So very. I can't stop looking at this work. I just want to admire it for so it's so beautiful. I had a different one behind here, but it's been oh, I think it I was like the one at the back. Which one? This one. Uh, show me. This one. Oh, I'm trying to follow you. Hold on. Oh, you like this one? Yeah. Oh yeah, I like this one a lot. I think Jeff did a different one uh, with a grocery market that no, it, most of these businesses were at what you call at mom and pops mm -hmm. shops, no longer available. And um, yeah, many of these restaurants obviously are no longer, but one that I really like was this grocer shop. So instead of this mom and shop existing there, uh, currently there's a save on foods in that, in that location and they have taken, this Avon Foods has taken in on sustaining and preserving this signage. It's the Maggie neon sign. Um, and then I've been, sorry, if you're watching, I've been warned about going to Google Images mm -hmm. <laughs> simply because um, the live stream might believe that I'm using copyrighted material and they don't, they don't, want, they don't want me to do that, so. Let's see, so Lucky Candy over here. So this exhibition does show a couple of the pieces that I I didn't actually keep for the real the real show for the yeah I don't know how the real physical show like that you could actually walk into so this was one of these <laughs> pieces I don't want to be mean and say that didn't make the cut <laughs> it's just that I thought that it's very visually striking. Oh, who's that? Hello? Oh, the computer. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, it's my computer. I wanted to maintain this piece for the candy bar, but then I selected the caramel one. 
The reason for that is that I like the linearity that went with both pieces. Let me show you if I go back into the Jeff Wilson exhibition. I just really enjoy the linear linearity that was happening here and I wanted to maintain this aspect and I felt like the font in of itself was creating the organic aspects that I liked to give contrast to this painting. Mm -hmm. Although, uh, here's the thing, also I was thinking that this usually you see more in a pack. So if you see this type of size, it already comes in one of those bunches that you buy as a whole. But this one's, it, this is something that's meant to be more as a display that you can actually grab into quickly as you put it on your checkout area. In the sense that this one, actually you have to go to the back, find it, grab it, and buy it as a whole bunch like this. So that's the reason why I decided not to include this piece. So for this one, I did want to add it. This would have looked good in this wall to create the international section. It's just that for this particular, I, I was thinking about the demographic that came within Lipon Gallery. We're currently in Richmond, and there's a big Asian community here. So I really wanted to be very conscious and as to catering to this community as well. Um, I mean, and I also thought that if I really wanted to make it a very proper international food section, I would need also uh, different cultures, aside from just Asian and Scottish one. Yeah, yeah, so Jeff is currently looking to do um, add a bit of like other cultures. I think he wanted to add, um, he was asking me what candy I associate from Latin America and I gave him my thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. So it would be very lovely if in the future I had the opportunity to show you both, you know, a little bit about around the world for this international section. Um, over there I find that our candy tends to be very spicy lemon based, which is very, rem it's very reminiscent of the actual ingredients that we add in our culture over there. So it would add a lot of green to the gallery. <laughs> Something that Jeff specifically wanted is to sustain this sense of a lot of golden tones, so this mm -hmm. yellow, to showcase the very similar color palettes that these companies use to in entice appetites within us, like the red of Coca-Cola, if you can call, if you can recall, it's actually trademarked to be used only by Coca-Cola because they think this is the perfect red that entices people to buy Coca-Cola. <laughs> so in many similar aspects, I find that these reds and oranges also mimic that spirit. So which is why you see a lot of um, golden tones within the gallery. And I wanted to be very cautious of that. Um, but that's the reason why this particular piece is not was not included. I just wish I had just a different, a, a, a different <laughs> culture added into this to make it a proper, um, international aisle, but um, and I'm also ca cautious of the space I use. I could have done that now that I look back into that. Hmm. What attracted me so much as to keeping this kimchi, because you see a bit of like Korean and Chinese, is that I, I, just, I just love kimchi so much and I really wanted to keep this. So f funny. The funny thing is mm -hmm. um, the whole package is made in the US. Oh, it's made in the yeah, U.S. You can tell that's on, on the package. Yeah, I mean, most of the Asian aisles mm -hmm. in supermarkets are um, catered towards Western audiences yeah. still. <laughs> so if you ever wanted to try a very true kimchi, you would actually have to go to a probably mom and shop, mom, mom and shop, mom and pops <laughs> shop that actually uh, that actually caters to an actual Korean community mm -hmm. and where you can buy like the more authentic uh, ingredients because um, you know we have the TNT that has as so for those who don't know TNT is a supermarket within uh, Vancouver that actually caters to an Asian community specifically a Chinese one I believe mm -hmm, yeah. and then they carry a lot of authentic items that you would buy um, in Asia mm -hmm. obviously they're not a very uh, comprehensive shop but they do carry some of the main ones I believe yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, let's see, 
Um, oh, well, some closing thoughts is just that I, let's talk about, I think I've been going around the shopping cart and haven't actually mentioned the shopping cart. So the shopping cart was to provide an opportunity to move away from the walls. I enjoy these walls very much, but I wanted to bring in the aspect of how galleries use this very neutral wall to set against something that could it works as a as a selling point as well this gal we associate this as part of the museum the museum the gallery experience and what i find so i wanted i found so interesting is that people really mention the back of this painting let me see can i sorry let me find another oh you have to go around yeah probably go this way yeah. and then i'll go this way yeah so People really enjoy look, looking at the back of this painting and uh, because many times uh, gallery visitors don't get to see this light. This is something that as gallery staff, you know, mm -hmm. preparators, we see very commonly. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that sometimes you can even see the studio life of the artist within the back of the paintings. You know, many times I see colors that don't even appear on the painting itself. Yeah. So I wonder, were you working on a different painting while you were making this painting? So, you know, you always get to wonder this curious thing. So I, I also find that, you know, uh, collectors, or not, not just collectors, but buyers of mm -hmm. art, they get access to this site as well. So by by presenting a piece like this, I, I thought that I was making it more accessible to other gallery visitors to see all, to see behind the scenes, to get a clear idea of what we as gallery staff get to experience more regularly. And um, uh, yeah, it's basically to demystify the elitism that goes within gallery systems. Uh, even though I have so much white <laughs> all around here, <laughs> Uh, my hope was to turn the gallery, uh, I ha you know, there was, I had many ideas, but so little time to make it happen. Uh, I wish I had done more to create, to add color, because color is very important to the supermarket experience and as to the way they display things. But I thought that um, by using the white of the um, gallery, I was trying, I was making those parallels very clear that the, this particular white is something that we use to market, promote, and create sense of elitisms within the system of the, within the gallery system. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to um, make this very distinction very clear. And then, uh, do I have any thoughts? Uh, yes, we added chips of the Cool Ranch. So um, if you didn't know, people could actually grab from this shopping basket here and right at the front over here. So the, the public was very welcome to activate these uh, installations by grabbing onto them um, and becoming, I guess, I guess you could call uh, a gallery client. So once again, I, I'm trying to demystify the elitism within the gallery structure by allowing the public to participate and also become a part of this exhibition. Um, and so these chips include a variety of the chips within the, um, within the gallery space. Um, some of them are not included, but I was hoping I would get the point across without actually having all of the um, all of the um, chips in here, mm -hmm. but I was just hoping that the branding of it that Jeff very kindly illustrates here was something to give us on whether how we question, once again, the authentication of these brands. Mm -hmm. And those are my closing thoughts on the exhibition. Oh, there's interesting things happen um, during the reception, because people do ask like, oh, is it that just insulation, can we really grab oh, it? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. they so, are like capacity. Like, oh, oh, yeah. I don't want to ruin your insulation. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's also another aspect that we, you know, because of the gallery, the presence, the quote unquote elitism, the professionals, so it's a little bit demystifying, a little bit intimidating to the general public. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to make this, uh, I, you know, I always attempt to make things as, as, as accessible. Sorry, I can't pronounce. 
I want to make things very accessible to the general public by creating very uh, works that they would be interested in seeing. So this was a <laughs> work that people were intimidated to grab into. There was, there's a bit of tension when you look at this installation. So this one has the, um, the, old, the uh, old dress chips that you see in this painting over here. Mm -hmm. So this one over here. So it surprised me a lot that people did not try to immediately grab onto the bigger bags. They went, they were a little more um, timid, so they grabbed onto the smaller chip bags. Because, you know, there's a lot, I did actually glue some of the, <laughs> of the, of the uh, installation down, so I could maintain at least some, some, some shape to it. Um, and create, and still maintain some of the tension. And by tension, I mean this section right over here. Um, so people, uh, this blue chip bag was very easy to grab, but no one went after this particular bag simply because they were intimidated that this whole structure will fall apart. Mm -hmm. So in many sense, I think of that particular tension as something that we we can think of as a system that um, there, there's so much, it's so unstable. And because it looks like everything could fall apart in any moment, we decide not to do anything about it, and we gravitate towards the things that we can actually pick up on the floor. So things that are, quote unquote, no longer at the top of the priority. So you, we see that instead of actually maintaining this structure level, um, instead we just decide to leave it alone. And um, that was the visual metaphor with the with this particular piece. And uh, let's see uh, if there's any other questions. I can answer them. No, have we done the good half a half hour now? Good. Okay. Um, Has it been solid? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining me and Jade and Berwin. Uh, on our little tour of the exhibition. Mm -hmm. You can check us out on social media mm -hmm. at You Know Arts. You Know Arts. You Know Arts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And then we can keep you updated when we have in exhibitions within the gallery space, but you know, you're more than welcome to visit us virtually. You, we also have a website where you can actually find out more about the artists, get more information on the artworks, and um, that sort of thing. We're currently working on developing an other, another marketplace for digital artworks, but that's still in the beta mm -hmm. phases. But you're more than welcome to have a look at it and give us your feedback. That would be much appreciated. So, or if you are like interested for projects, you can just like um, come to visit us and just have a chat. Yeah, I mean, if you're interested in, to, in collaborating with us, mm -hmm. you can send us an email if you're um, if you're internationally. We can see how we can um, add you to our database. If you're a local artist, you have the privilege of actually yeah. <laughs> exhibiting with us and being a part of our gallery. Yeah, we can. Al we're always looking um, for potential collaborations with artists. We like to showcase emerging talent that has yet to be discovered within the greater Vancouver area. Mm -hmm. So we're always very excited about meeting artists and seeing what they uh, could bring us, not just to the gallery, but also mm -hmm. the community of Richmond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All righty. So I'll be saying my farewell, everyone. Thank you so much for seeing my uh, virtual exhibit, my, vi uh, my virtual tour. Yeah. It feels so weird to say that. Okay. Um, so um, I don't know how to use um, the sticker we use. Um, oh yeah, the sticker. Know. Let me see. So we have a sticker that our um, technician—I don't want to call him name technician because he does everything around here. Um, so we'll be very gladly leaving you links on the comment section. So I just wait uh, for Jay to do that because if we close, if we end the stream, she can't give you those links. Oh, which, which one do you want? Uh, can you just give them the social media for You Know Arts, the Instagram? Oh, yeah. Please follow. Please follow us on Instagram. That would be much appreciated. And like this live stream, subscribe.
do all the uh, YouTube things. <laughs> oh my goodness, I feel like such a YouTuber doing that. Oh. And uh, if you, once again, would like to collaborate with us, you're very welcome to reach out um, to our um, info at yklm.ca and we can answer any questions you may have about what we do, how we do it, <laughs> and how we, pro we proceed with collaborations. I always feel so shiny over here. Let me yeah, watch. You guys are doing really great for today. Yay. We have an upcoming exhibition, so please um, follow us on Instagram or YouTube, and we'll keep you updated on uh, of the new artist, his name is Long Gao. So he is a um, Chinese-born uh, artist who currently is practicing in Vancouver, Canada. And um, we will be for the uh, we will showcasing his light series. That will be the first time he goes. Uh, it gets exhibited here in Canada. So we're very excited about these uh, these uh, emerging artists. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he is having a solo exhibition here at the gallery, so you are more than welcome to come in to see the artworks for yourself. Or once again, you can visit us online and see the virtual exhibitions. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for coming to my TED Talk, which is not a tech talk. <laughs> Should I end it now? Yeah, okay. okay, okay, great. I'll end it here too. Okay. Bye. Bye. Good night. And stream.